I started in my career lusting to be the number one. I felt I was hardwired to be a number one. Uh, I climbed the ladder in uh, the advertising industry to a point where I was the chief executive quite young, and I enjoyed it. I suppose as I developed through my career, what I began to sense was a discomfort. I began to feel a real weight on my shoulders, particularly around the people decisions, uh, which were many, uh, around the, the, the frenetic pace to drive uh, revenue and profitability. And I began to really lust after a role where I could think more, where I'd have more time and space. And I, I said out loud in a corridor somewhere, I, I just never want to be a chief executive ever again. It's just, it's horrendous. And I was hauled in by the HR director and he said to me, Richard, never be heard ever again saying you don't want to be a chief executive ever again. And I, I asked him why not and he said, because people will conclude you don't want to be a chief executive. And that was kind of the point. I didn't want to be a chief executive ever again. I suppose what I took from that lesson was how people feel about deputies, assistants, number twos. There's still an embedded assumption that if you choose to be a number two, there's something wrong with you. There's a flaw. So I found since giving up that CEO slot and taking on a deputy role, I feel every bit as accountable for my own performance. I remain completely competitive and restless and ambitious but the effort is channeled into something different and the skills that it takes to influence the organisation, to be effective for the organisation, uh, they're just different. Uh, I'm exercising a different muscle and I, I must say I find it much more joyous.